Hello, shalom, and welcome to Crack Pots. So I'm Alana, and this is Crack Pot intro video. So we're going to be sharing the idea behind the name Crack Pots and have a small Bible study. So the idea behind this name Crack Pots is that we all are a little bit broken by this journey called life. And some of our cracks and our earthly clay pot are physical. So, you know, some of us have physical illness that we have to deal with, while others, like myself, have broken parts called disabilities. So I have a genetic condition that causes continual um, sight and hearing loss and because of the range of both my sight and hearing I'm considered a blind deaf person I have very little vision or hearing left and so I'm using this clay pot here this image to reflect my own cracked pot so it's not only physical things but it's also mental things that cause us to have cracks. So some of us come from broken homes. Um, many of us have endured traumatic things that have happened in our lives that cause the mental gouges on our pods. So lots of damage to the journey called life. So the point is, is that whether it is our body, soul, mind, or spirit, we all have something that we've endured or even something that we're currently going through that causes a crack on our earthly clay pot or even lots of cracks on our earthly clay pot. So why clay pot? Well, that has to do with the first person created, which was Adam. And he was created from the dust of the ground. So let's look at that verse in Genesis. So it says, by the sweat of your brow, will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made? For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Genesis 3.19. So this isn't just an allegory or figurative language because scientists have discovered, you know, the body is made up of the same elements found in the soil. In fact, I read that there were, I believe it's 59 properties of the human body that are also found in the clay of the ground. So it is so true that when we decompose, we all go back to dust. So let's look at this word dust that shows up in Genesis 3. And this is the Hebrew word afar. And it's the strong 6083. And I put the Hebrew letters there for you. Uh, Hebrew is read from right to left. So we have the letter ayin, we have a pe in the middle and a resh at the end, and that's where you get the word afar without the vowel points. And it's dry earth, it's dust, it's powder, it's ashes. So it's basically very finely particle soil. What I found really interesting is this word afar shows up in Genesis 2, where Adam is being created, whereas in Genesis 1, when it talks about the animals coming from the ground, dust, dirt, earth, whatever your translation says, that word there is aretz, which means earth, or it will often be ha'aretz, the earth. And that is very different from afar. A far and a res seems like the same thing, dust and dirt, but a far is something that the creator used to create Adam, where a res 
is the earth that the creator used in Genesis 1 to create the animals. So there is a difference there, most definitely. So, you know, the creator didn't just create Adam. He created each one of us. And we don't just randomly come here as a human being. We were designed by our creator. And let's look at a cool verse. I love this verse. This is Psalm 139, verse 13. And it says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Now, that's a really awesome thought that God is knitting us together in our mother's womb. And because God created us, he is the master potter. So let's look at another great verse. This one is in Isaiah 64, 8. It says, yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. All of us. We are all the work of his hands. So many... I think many people feel they're just randomly here. You're just a product of a sperm and egg. But you were no accident. You were created. Let's look at another verse. This this one's great, too. I think all Bible verses are pretty great, actually. <laughs> so 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says, For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. So, yes, <laughs> God is the master potter, and we have his light and his presence through Yeshua, HaMashiach, through Jesus Christ, inside our jars of clay, so that when we are used by our master potter and we do amazing things for him, it's him through us, it's his light through us, it's his glory through us. And it's not us. So it's it's God's power within us that helps us. And a lot of times I think we feel unworthy because of our cracks. <laughs> we think, well, because I'm this way, I'm not really worthy. And someone who really felt unworthy about that was Moses, you know, when God told him, hey, I want you to go and, you know, you're going to be part of my big plan to rescue the Israelites and deliver them from Pharaoh and out of bondage of Egypt. Moses was like, what? <laughs> and he made lots of excuses and he just, he just couldn't believe that he was being called to this and he didn't want to do it. And uh, let's look at God's response to him. And this is Exodus chapter 4, 11. Then the Lord called Moses. Who, or sorry, the Lord asked Moses. He called him, but the verse says, uh, then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear? See or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now that's a challenging verse. That's a real challenging verse to reflect on what the Creator is actually saying. But He's saying, I know about your disabilities. It's not going to get in the way of my plans for you. Let's look at another challenging verse. This is Isaiah chapter 45, 
9, and it says, What sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Does the clay part argue with its maker? Does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it, saying, Stop, you're doing it wrong. Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy can you be? So this is kind of hard when we have to accept. When we're born with something and wrestle with the question, did God really create me on purpose to have this disability? And have this cracked pot. And for those of us who were born that way, or even those of us who have journeyed in life and things have happened to us, that's not the real point. The point is God loves cracked paws, and he can transform us and work through us no matter what your damage is to your pot. That's the main point. So, yes, continue for your healing, press in for it, but while you're waiting for it, accept yourself as you were made. Contend for better things because we know that there's no sickness in heaven, and as Father's will in heaven, so let it be in earth. But don't get stuck in that. Move forward and understand that your cracks are not a limitation in God's sight. And I'm not referring to cracks that as an excuse. So, for an example, I have this bad trauma that happened to me, and because of this, now I can act like a jerk <laughs> and be angry and, you know, walk and sin and do all these ugly things to people. Now, I'm talking about cracks in a sense that we are wounded, but in our humility, we are being transformed by our acknowledging that God the Father is working through us to heal those areas. And so I love this verse, Let's, or not a verse, but it's not a verse, but it's a great saying. It's a great quote where it says, God never calls to qualify, but qualifies the calls. And we can see that in the life of Moses, in the life of David. Um, King David was actually a shepherd, and he was overlooked by his family, and he was the, the baby. We can also see it, a real good, good example of it, with Yeshua and his disciples. These guys were really something. They weren't educated. Some of them had temper issues. Some of them ran at the mouth. Um, they were all jockeying for position and fighting among each other. They, they were really something. And yet we can see the transformation, how Yeshua used them and how they submitted to him and his will and God's will. And it's just amazing to see the transformation that happened with those disciples so let's look at another verse this is ephesians 2 10 and it says for we are god's masterpiece he has created us anew in christ jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago so what good things did God prepare for you to do? Think about that. It says right there, he, he planned some things for you to do. He created you and he planned some things. So some good things. And if we think about it, there's always something good that we can do for others and service to others and service to the creator. And it might be just as simple as being friendly, being nice and smiling to your cranky neighbor <laughs> or you know you go to the grocery store and you help somebody out that's in a, a handicap 
chair, you know, buzzing around and can't reach the top shelf, you know, always be looking for the good things that God has prepared in advance for you to do. They, they don't have to be huge, big things. They can be small things too. So, and this verse says you're a masterpiece. Consider that you are a masterpiece, even with all your broken parts. Now we're going to look at something great. Kintsugi. This is a Japanese art form. And what it is, Kintsugi, is they use lacquer that's mixed with gold, silver, or platinum dust, and they use it to repair broken pottery. So kin is gold and sugi is um, to join. So kinsugi is like gold joinery. That's what the name means. And it's really an awesome, beautiful art where they take things that are broken, they put it together, and they don't try to hide the scars on it because it is the brokenness of it that makes it beautiful. So let's look at some of those pieces. So this is an understanding that the broken part is not the ugly part. The broken part is a beautiful part and the enemy can come in and do all this damage but then god comes along and he says i'm gonna repair it i'm gonna fix it i'm gonna heal it i'm gonna make that broken part be the part that actually is the most beautiful part <laughs> here's another beautiful pot so god repairs us with his presence, with his life, with his love, with who he is. And through that, we get healed and transformed. And then those broken parts can be used for his glory. This is just beautiful, beautiful art. So if we humble ourselves and then we acknowledge our struggles, instead of fighting them, just say we acknowledge our struggles, then our loving creator transforms us and he makes us into an even more beautiful piece of art. So we need to acknowledge that we're broken vessels and be humble about your cracks, but don't stay in your cracks. <laughs> stay in your crack. That sounds weird, but Embrace your struggles, acknowledge your struggles, but realize that it doesn't end there. God's got a plan. You are a masterpiece. He wants to shine his light and his glory through your broken parts. This is a great thing. The whole idea of crack pots. And that's why we created this crack pot channel. So, Hope you enjoyed the Bible study. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of these, but we're going to do lots of various subjects and all kinds of what we hope will be very interesting for you to listen to and grow in God's word and maybe learn some things you didn't know before. And then we'll also have the crack me up part, which is just little bits and snippets from Lady Marmalade to uh, give you a little splash of joy and just a little uh, uplifting in this really hard times that we are living in. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this. And now here's the YouTube plug. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> Never thought I'd be saying that, but it really does help with the algorithms and spread it out to where other people will be able to uh, to see it that might not be able to see it. So every like and every subscribe really does help. And so got to do that YouTube plug. So anyway, 
hope you enjoy the study and shalom and God bless.